All right, back on the 1600 here, I'll show you a couple things. We got the uh, inside of the case D bird. Went ahead and ran a uh, sander through there because this case had some uh, porosity in it. So I was trying to knock all the uh, porosity and dust loose that was uh, loose in there. And uh, it was easy way to get the paint out. We got our scat lifters installed in there. Uh, we got plenty of clearance. One way to check this. Uh, you can set the bearings in there and check it, or you can gently set the cam in without the bearing and check your clearance. We got about 48 without the bearing in there. With the bearing, we're going to have more than enough. One thing I want to show you, oh, that's the other thing we did on this. We uh, deburred the uh, camshaft. You can see the edge right here. Took the radius or the edge off of it. That uh, helps with the lifter life. You go in there and do that. Uh, some of this stuff might be stuff that you're not comfortable doing. You know, you might want to get somebody to do it. Or uh, make sure you have some good Gorilla tape on your cam in case you slip. Here's our pump after it's been blueprinted. You can see down in there the hole's been done. We did the top, the turn, cleaned up the little uh, cavity there. And we did both sides. So we cleaned that side up also. Uh, haven't heard if we're going to full flow this or not, so I don't know whether, whether to plug this or not, tap it. And uh, I think we're just going to go standard. So that's uh, where we're at next. I'm going to check the in play on the cam, put the bearings in there, the oil pump, make sure that everything clears, the gear clears, and the bolts aren't hitting and all that stuff. I'll show you how to do that. But uh, moving right along. So uh, now we need to get it off the floor and into a stand. So we have to clean the bench up over here, move the big block stuff out of the way and stuff like that. I'm taking the uh, 2110 out of the stand. I pulled the uh, crank out of it. There's the uh, crank and rod assembly. 4130 crank with uh, H beam rods. And uh, I think this is pretty much ready to go. We got the cam clearance. So you need to cut this one cam bearing off right here. That's the uh, rod swings through there. And hits this bearing. So I have to cut the corner of the bearing off. And uh, these lifter bores need to be uh, clearanced a little bit. And uh, yeah. So I'm going to bag that up, put that away for a little while because I'm not working on that right now. We'll get back on that. And then I got parts for the uh, Hemi. Hemi, Hemi. This is uh, when you know the company knows they've got a problem. Here's the uh, rod assemblies. This is how they come. And uh, I want to say they run under $100 for this setup, which I think is pretty awesome. But it uh, comes pressed on already. Brand new uh, mall piston. Small insignia there, brand new ring package, uh, coated skirt, H beam uh, rod, very nice, robust rod in these Hemi motors. New bolts, new bearings, so uh, <clears throat> that's ready to go. Uh, we'll uh, pull the rings off, check the end gap, and that uh, one cylinder that was repaired. Mm. Get that back in the hole there, and. Uh, get going on that I only got one motor mount takes two so uh, we'll see what's going on with that and uh, we got the okay to finish that up and get that out of here so we got uh, this guy's mama's car over here he just took this down to the tire store and has some new tires on there and he told him it needed some uh, parts so I was gonna show you guys how to check and see if your ball joints are bad Let's move the jack out of the way. I apologize for the shaky cam, but on these Fords, you know, you got the uh, skinny control arm on the top and the, you know, traditional fat stamp control arm on the bottom. First thing we're gonna notice, uh, you wanna check if you have one of these, your sway bar links. Grab the sway bar. These are bad. There's none left. So this needs a link kit. You always order the hardware, the new bushings. You can get these in uh, urethane. 
are the standard factory ones. You get them from the dealer. They normally come with all the uh, new hardware. So a lot of times I like the dealer ones, but we'll see what we get. Looks like a factory shock. Obviously, we have some suspension woes. So let's uh, check the ball joint. The best way to do it is to jack the vehicle up, support the frame, get your jack stands in a good location, nice safe location. I always like to leave the jack under here just in case. You know, I'll leave it locked under there and uh, lock it down. So I got two jack stands and the jack under there in just in case mode. Now what you want to do is uh, there's no weight on the vehicle, the tires off the ground. And you're going to take a long bar or a pry bar and we're going to look at the ball joint. I'll try to get you in here and not make you too sick. Well, let's uh, you want to put this uh, underneath the tire and you want to pry up and you can see that ball joint is uh, dangerous. So there we go. Anytime you can see any movement at all, you want to pry up and you'll see the uh, ball move up in the uh, socket. Uh, I can see the top one's bad also. And uh, also the control arm bushings are bad. So what we'll do on the top is we'll just get a complete control arm assembly with the bushings and the ball joint. And we'll press the ball joint in on the bottom. And it looks like it's going to need a sway bar link kit. And uh, <clears throat> uh, I think they want to do brakes also, new rotors, and new pads on this one. So that's what's going on. And uh, that's how to check for uh, bad ball joints. It's pretty important that you do this every once in a while. You can, something you can do it yourself. Here's the other side. Now let's take this to a shop. And, uh, usually shops will do this for free. A lot of you guys, do. this one's bad also. I don't have any strength in that arm to make it move, but there it goes. Most states that have inspections catch this stuff. Was that when I was a kid, you had to have an inspection sticker in Florida and you'd have to drive to the uh, inspection station. And that guy didn't miss anything. They had a big long rod they'd put under there and they pop an air jack under there and hang your tire and check all your suspension stuff. And I was one of those four kids that drove junk, so. So that's where we're at. We'll uh, see what he wants to do. He uh, didn't believe uh, that all that stuff could possibly be bad. But it is, but it is. Look at it, we got more and more John Kerry as the day goes on. So I'm gonna get cheats this one up for you guys. And uh, I'm gonna try to wake Hans up, get him to come out and help me pick up those heads. Move that stuff, because I'm not in the picking up mood today. Even though the sun's coming out now, it's been a rough uh, 20 hours. But anyway, we got Ken coming tomorrow. Said he found the flywheel. It's got the dowel pins, so uh, we should be pretty good. I'm gonna start assembling the crank tonight. So we'll do a video of that. Put the rods on, put the bearings in there, get all the components laid out where we can just uh, drop and snap it together. And then uh, I imagine it'll probably take three or four hours. Uh, it probably takes about two hours usually to build a set of rocker arms. So we'll save that fun for him. We'll get the heads bolted on. We're gonna build the solid shaft rocker kits and uh, get all that stuff squared away. But uh, we'll get the short block all laid out and uh, I'll get the bench cleaned off and when I get everything all laid out proper, I'll turn the video back on and uh, give you guys another, uh, give you a look-see. You know, after we bolt the cam gear on, how to position that, where the dot goes in relationship to the load and uh, all that stuff. And uh, cam came with assembly lube or break-in lube for the cam. You always want to make sure you use cam lube on the cam, not assembly lube on the lifters. <coughs> Some guys are confused by that, but uh, you know. it says assembly grease Joe Gribbs. But uh, I use what they send, but uh, don't put this stuff on the bearings. 
usually for the cam it has a little bit of abrasive in it here's the cam sheet so we'll take a look at that and uh, came with bolts even though there's bolts in the gear set so we'll uh, figure out which bolts are better quality and then uh, we'll go from there so yeah so let me clean this mess up get it up off the ground make us a nice little work surface and uh, get the motor in the stand and uh, we'll be ready to go so all right guys let me see if i can wake hans up before the sun goes down <laughs> 